Hey everybody, this is Marcia from Everything Wine and More. I am the Vintage Room Manager here and welcome to another introduction video. So up until this point you've been learning about grape varieties, uh, really important international grape varieties such as Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay and Cabernet. Well now we're taking a break from that and we're going to do an introduction to Italian whites. Probably one of the misunderstood, most misunderstood categories of wines are Italian whites because most people think they taste the same. There is a lot of bitter almond in some of them, that is true, but there's a lot of fantastic um, indigenous white varieties coming out of Italy and the wines that come from them are fantastic and some of them are even ageable. So let's take a little trip from north to south through the country of Italy and look at some of these white wines. We're gonna start off in Piemonte, of course, in the uh, northwest corner here of the country. There's a lot of native grapes, and one of the most famous ones is Arnace. So in the Rorero region, which is just on the left side of where Barolo is, they make this beautiful grape called Arnace. Tends to have a lot of body, a lot of uh, mouthfeel to it, and some notes of white flowers, Yes, those almond notes, but some peach and apricot and a really full mouthfeel. And we've got a couple examples of that, not just from Rorero, but from Lange, which is a bigger region as well that features the Aranese grape. Further north, still in Piemonte, they have another quality grape called Erbaluce. Erbaluce comes from the Caluso region. And if you look at a detailed map of Piemonte, it's in the north part. It's a grape that wears many hats. It can be a sparkling, it can be a sweet pasito wine, or in this case, a beautiful still white wine that has a lot of minerality, uh, high zippy acidity, white flower, apricot, and chlorophyll. It's just gorgeous. So if you want something different, come in and try an Ed Beluche. Just below Piemonte sits this little hook region called Liguria. Close to Monaco, lots of, um, you know, fishing here, lots of really nice hot weather, Mediterranean type weather, uh, as, as I said, very close to Monaco. And their main white grape is called Vermentino. Incidentally, Vermentino also grows in Sardinia, one of the islands in the Mediterranean of Italy, and in Tuscany, a little bit further down the coast. We're gonna look at Vermentino from Liguria. There's also a, another grape there called Pigato that they are genetically identical, but yet they produce very different wines. So if you're looking for a Vermentino, you want to look on the east part of Liguria. If you're looking for Pigato, you want to look at the western part of Liguria for those Pigato wines. But Lune, one of the pr oldest producers there, making this black label Etichetta Nera, of Vermentino, it's a stunning wine. Uh, this one's a little bit more expensive, so if you want to start small, we have the Etichetta Grigia, the gray label also here in the store, to start your journey into Vermentino. But trust me, once you taste this black labeled Vermentino, you're probably not gonna to wanna to go back to the gray label. Vermentino is gonna have a lot of pure freshness, notes of acacia honey, golden delicious apple, musk, granite, and you'll always, with Vermentino, get that salty tang on the finish, which is sort of indicative of that Vermentino grape. Absolutely gorgeous. So now we're gonna to move towards the east side of Italy. We're gonna to go towards the Adriatic Sea, and right in the middle, they have one landlocked region called Umbria. Umbria is a very mountainous region, cooler climate there, and they have um, a big, powerful red wine, red tannic wine called Segrantino, which is kind of more what they're known for. However, their white grape of note in the Montefalco area, which is the same area that they make Segrantino, is Grecchetto. And you might actually be familiar with Orvieto wines, so Orvieto wines. Orvieto is a region that crosses between Umbria and Lazio and sometimes makes those uh, semi-sweet wines that come from Grecchetto as one of the grapes. It is a blend. This, however, 100% Grecchetto 
and it's uh, again you're gonna find those uh, hints of almond interwoven with ripe fruit and some floral notes give this one a go if you're looking for a really easy patio wine under twenty dollars and then as we go further towards the Adriatic coast now we're definitely on the coast and we're here in Modica in what they call the elbow of Italy's boot so you can see that little part that juts out there so Marche and Abruzzo, two regions right next to each other that are on the Adriatic coast. In Marche, they're known for a grape called the Verdicchio. And Verdicchio happens to be one of Italy's most ageable white grapes. It's a fantastic grape. They have two quality regions here, Verdicchio di Castelli di Iesi and Verdicchio Metallica. Both of them have quality verdicchio. Differences being is that Metallica is higher in the mountains, so it tends to exhibit more minerality, a little higher acidity, whereas Yezi is further inland, uh, more coastal, and you have this um, warm roundness to it. Um, it's very, uh, can be, can be very, uh, um, in its, as it ages, more uh, sponge toffee, more of those butterscotch notes. And one that I really like is the Sal Mariano from Marati Campi. And the nice thing about this is that it's got 20% aged in oak. So it really truly gives it a roundness. All Verdicchio is aged on its lees. Lees is actually the dead yeast cells. So after the yeast has finished fermenting all of the sugars to alcohol, it falls to the bottom of the tank as a lees. And this gets stirred around and it adds texture and complexity to the wine. Then add in 20% of this particular wine aged in an oak barrel, and you've got all of these flavors really melting together. Uh, vanilla, sponge toffee, you've got um, elderflower, great minerality, of course, and high acidity, which makes for a great ageable white grape. That's Verdicchio. And then as I mentioned, Abruzzo, just to the south of Marche, still on the Adriatic coast. This is a region where you can be on the beach and in the mountains on the same day. Very diverse terroir here, home to Montepulciano, the grape, and Ab Tre Trebbiano Abruzzese. So Trebbiano is a group of grapes, and most often you hear of Trebbiano Toscana, which is grown all over Italy, mostly, of course, in Toscana in our um, Vinsanto blends. It's a high acid grape, so it's good for that acidity in a blend. A Trebbiano Abruzzese, though, is a superior Trebbiano that makes the wine Trebbiano d'Abruzzo. So the grape, Trebbiano Abruzzese, the wine, Trebbiano Abruzzo, Trebbiano di Abruzzo. So Cristiana Tiberio, my friend here, is one of the few producers that actually grows Trebbiano Abruzzese and makes this fabulous white wine here. Green apple, apricot, orange blossom fill your nose and palate, and the zippy acidity here makes for a great food match from fish to even uh, bigger meats like pork. All right, so now you're gonna get in your car and you're gonna take a little drive from Abruzzo and you're gonna go back to the west to Rome, the capital of Italy, which is in Lazio. So Lazio here, on we're back on the west coast. Of course, Rome, the capital city, and the home to the Bellone grape. So Bellone, a native grape of Lazio, a high quality white grape that is grown there that makes this um, Again, ageable white wine. There's some beautiful aroma, aromas and flavors of mango and papaya, along with a creamy nose and texture due to the wild yeasts that are used here. So I tell people that if you like Chardonnay, you might like Bellone. Keep going down further until you go to Basilicata, which is in the instep of Italy's boot. This little region here between the toe and the heel of Italy's boot is called Basilicata. A lot of extinct volcanoes here. It is the home to the Alianico grape. And because there really is not a lot of other grapes really of note that we know about, Alianico can do many things. Red, rosato, and in this case, a white Alianico. 
In fact, this is almost a Blanc de Noir. It, no, it is a Blanc de Noir. It's just made from the juice of the Alianico grape. And this is from Madonna delle Grazia del Lucone. This is honestly one of my favorite wines. I love the minerality of this wine. Lots of pear, acacia flower, golden delicious apple. And this to me is a great summer wine. So if you haven't tried this, please do come in and grab a bottle. It's under 25 bucks. Great value, great wine. And since we're talking about that heel, Puglia is the region of Italy's heel here, this long skinny one um, that's got water pretty much on three sides here. It's home to the grape Bambino Bianco. So if you want to head to the beach for a day, this might be reminiscent of being on the beach. Although it's grown in northern Puglia and the beaches are more to the south and the east, this is a great little grape. Crisp acidity, notes of white flowers and tree fruits. This is a super easy going white and it's $16.99. So if you haven't tried Bombino Bianco, come on in and grab a bottle. And not to be forgotten, of course, the islands. So I mentioned Sardinia for Vermentino, which is here. Sicily is just right here down at the bottom, just right next to Calabria, which is the toe. Sicily is the largest island in the Mediterranean, and it boasts some really fantastic native grapes, especially the ones that are grown on Mount Etna. So Mount Etna is the only, um, the largest active, the only and largest, not the only, but the largest active volcano in Europe. And grown very high on the slopes of this smoking gun is this white grape called Kericante, up to a thousand meters in fact that it can ripen. So on this, again, another highly ageable white grape, this is the uh, Etna Bianco from Pietro Dolce. Their winery is located on the north slope of Mount Etna. And this is an incredible wine with citrus notes, golden delicious apple again, and of course that minerality that comes from being so high up on that volcanic soil. Crisp acidity, uh, Kerecante is just a fabulous, fabulous white grape. So we've had our little tour of Italy from north to south. I hope you enjoyed our little tour. Of course, we have many, many other uh, white grapes, white wines here from Italy in the store. So if you're curious about any other white grape or white wine, please do come in and chat with me and I'd be happy to take you on an even different and cool tour of Italy and its white wines. Thanks for joining me today. Ciao.